CMS, look at kind of the ease of use there. And then we're going to be kind of wrapping up and finalizing with the post project. So what it looks like for, you know, ongoing support, ongoing hosting, um, just kind of that ongoing use once actually launching a website. Um, one question we did have before we jump into things is under a couple of the sections, we saw some Google elements. Are you guys fully um, utilizing Google um, Apps for Education at this point and using things like Google Calendars, Google Drive, um, kind of all that good stuff? Yes, we are fully Google Apps for Education. Okay, wonderful. Well, we'll definitely touch on the different Google integrations that we offer um, once we get to the demo portion. I think we can also talk a little bit about single sign-on, single sign-on, and some other elements that we offer there. So, any kind of, I, I guess, diversion from that agenda that you guys would like to see, or um, should we go ahead and jump in and get started? Thank you. Just go Let's ahead. Jump in. Yep. Get started. Okay. Wonderful. And if you guys um, want, I'm going to kind of pause at the end of each quick category just to give you guys a little bit of time if you want to ask any questions before we move on. Um, so again, feel free to, if you want to interrupt us and, and ask a question before you forget what it is, feel free to do that as well. Um, but just to introduce ourselves um, again we're we're with Edlio so to give you a little bit of an idea of where we are who we are we've been doing this for about 18 years now we do have four different offices in the US um, and we work with about 10,000 schools and districts nationally so the closest office to you guys would be our Chicago office which is where Mary is based we also have an office out of Austin Texas and then Ivan and I are actually out of our Los Angeles headquarters. And then we also have an office up in the Mountain View area. So basically what we do is we offer a communication solution to our clients, um, which encompasses our website CMS, which is what we're going to be talking about today. But keep in mind, if you do decide to move forward with us, we do also offer some different app-based products. Um, one of them being a parent communication app, um, which also encompasses a map communication system. So just a couple other things to kind of keep in mind um, if you are looking to kind of consolidate some of the platforms that you guys use in the future, that would be an option with us. Um, so as far as um, kind of getting started, where I was going to start is um, kind of the, the design process, that introduction process. So I know that custom design is something that was important for you guys. So that's going to be kind of the initial starting point. Um, so are you able to share your screen with us? Oh, yeah. Thank you. The uh, newbie move, I guess. I guess it's a little bit too early for me uh, for whatever reason. So are you guys seeing uh, my yep. screen now? Yep, we see it now. Okay, perfect. So to kind of go back to what I was showing you guys before, I was showing a, a quick uh, a map of our locations. Ivan is laughing at me right now. Okay? It's been a little too long since I've done one of these product demos. But this is just uh, this is all you guys missed so far. It's just a quick uh, a quick map. So going back to this, um, so again, I wanted to start off with kind of the design process. So I know from what you guys are saying, you're looking for a custom design. So that's definitely something that's offered with Edlio. We actually have three different design options. Um, the first being a fully custom design that our in-house graphic designers can actually build from scratch for you all. We also do offer a premium template option, which is called Spikes Gallery, and then a little bit more of a standard template option, which is called Spikes Sketches. So three different options, kind of depending on what your needs are. Keep in mind that all of our sites are mobile responsive, so mobile responsive both on the front end, you can full scale of the design here. You can see that this design, they have some elements like social media embedded on the site. They have their 
earthquake links that take them to spaces like strategic plan, employment. They also have different news and announcements in the center section. Um, and then they also have some additional quick links um, in this space here. Um, they, with Shorewood School District, they wanted to have just a very simple, clean navigation. So you just see their navigation bar up here at the top. It's also going to easily take you to all of the different school sites. So this would be what we call a district-wide solution. So if I click on Shorewood High School, it's going to then take me to the high school section and I can see the different content that's housed here. Um, to show another example, this is actually a little bit of a larger district that we work with. Um, so a little bit closer to um, the size of you all. So this is another way to kind of utilize and give you guys an idea of some of the designs that we've done. So again, up top you see a very simple, clean um, navigation bar. Since they are a bit larger of a district, they actually have a select a school section up at the top, and that's going to open to show all of the school site options. So again, being a district-wide solution, I can click into one of these individual school sites. If I wanted to go to Diamond Ranch High School, I can click on that, and it's going to take me to their individual um, domain here. It's also going to take me to their specific design, um, which might slightly vary with the branding, um, with the colors, things like that. But again, with the district-wide solution, it's going to be a consistent, cohesive design kind of across the board. Um, with this district, they did a little bit of a variety where they actually did it an individual design for elementary, a design for middle schools, and then a design for the high schools. So that's an option to a standard district-wide solution that was going to be um, kind of the same design across the board. So this is a little bit better example of a, a district using the same design um, across all the board, uh, all the school sites and the district. So again, you can kind of see the main district site here. Again, when it's gonna, what it's going to look like in that mobile view. Um, with this district, they also wanted um, some kind of scroll through options. So in addition to the nice mega menu navigation that just makes it very easy to navigate, very nice and visual. Um, as I scroll down, I'm also going to see those uh, quick links in the center taking me to things like power school sign-in, um, their meal section, enrollment pages, and then they also have that scroll through news, which has been really, really popular in design lately, where you can actually click through the news section um, with their calendar of events. Similarly, you can actually click through or swipe through if you're on your phone. And then if I click on show all events, it's actually going to take me to a section where I can see all the upcoming district events. And I can also filter in any of the school content. So, for example, if I have a student at Centennial Elementary and Columbia High School, I could select just those schools um, or whatever school content. If I have an athletic calendar, whatever it might be here, you have a lot of nice filtering options. And keep in mind, um, the calendars do fully integrate with Google. So if you wanted to sync up with Google and actually pull content directly from any Google calendar, that's something that you guys um, can do as well. Um, but again, with the design process, this is going to be something where um, you do work with a project manager from start to finish to kind of give you a little bit of a scope of what that process this is a spike's journey um spike is our little mascot here at edlio he's a little uh, lion so that's uh, what that means but this process essentially shows you what it's going to look like from start to finish so um introductory project begins that's when we would start the design process um this is also when you would get to know the project manager they would get to know you the project scope, your goals, um, you know, an idea of what your aesthetics are with the design, um, and also start discussing preliminary things like content migration, um, staff directories, things like that. Once we move into the actual design process itself, this is when we provide you different mock-ups, you go through different revision processes, um, and then once the design is approved, that's when we start moving into content migration, um, into actually programming the website. That's also when we would set up things like if you're using Google Single Sign-On, if you're using LDAP, um, we also do a lot of QC checks to make sure that everything was migrated 
correctly, all your content looks good. Um, we do offer unlimited static migration for the district site, and then each school um, gets 20 pages per uh, child account is what we call it, but that would be for each school site. Um, keep in mind, you can kind of mix and match content migration a little bit. What we find frequently is an elementary school might only have 10 to 15 pages of content that they want to migrate over. So if, you know, a high school or a school that has a little bit more content wants to kind of allocate those five to 10 additional pages, we can definitely do that. Um, but you're going to get 20 pages per site, which can be kind of mixed and matched. Um, so again, we move into programming delivery of the site. That's when we're going to give you guys kind of test links. You can overview everything. You can start adding content before we actually launch the site. This is also when we're going to move into training. We do offer training for your staff. Um, standardly, that's going to be about two and a half hours of administrative training. If you guys would like to think about adding on teacher training um, or an additional training section uh, session, that's definitely something that we could do. Um, districts that are larger than 20 schools will normally give um, an additional two and a half to three hours of training at no additional cost. And then once we do kind of launch the site, um, keep in mind your uh, relationship with Edlio wouldn't end there. We offer a very robust tech support options for all of your staff. Tech support is completely unlimited for all of your users. So whether you're a district-wide administrator or you're a school site manager, whatever your user credential is, we also offer teacher pages. Um, teachers also have newsletter options, things like that. So teachers would have full tech support. It's really for anybody that has an Edleo um, account. And again, we offer unlimited licenses for a district-wide solution, but they are covered completely under that tax support, and that's both phone and ticketing support. So again, very robust support. We want to have a platform that's as easy to update, you know, as you know, posting to social media, things like that. But again, we want to make sure that for users that maybe are a little bit less comfortable with technology, that they do have all the support they need. And in addition to tech support, we also offer a client success wrap to each of our clients. So that's going to be a direct point of contact that you all would have, and they can help with things like um, ongoing training. If you guys get new staff um, and need to train new staff, they can definitely help with that. Um, redesigns, whatever it might be that, you know, kind of a little bit outside just standard tech support. And keep in mind, in addition to all of this direct support, we also have a very robust help center. This is something that you guys can access, um, you know, 24-7 whenever you need. We also post, um, we have refresher webinars pretty regularly. We have one coming up on the 22nd as well as the 27th. Um, this is something all of our clients can attend. Um, and then we post those recordings to our help center, but there's also different um, articles. Uh, you can search the help center, different learning paths. Um, so again, we want to have as much support as you guys possibly need. So um, just taking a quick peek at the agenda. So I think from here, um, are there any questions about the um, kind of process itself? I know that was a little bit of a quick overview, but I want to make sure that we have enough time to kind of get through the demo portion. But any questions before we move on? How much training was that? Training was that? So all standard contracts come from with two and a half hours of training included in the setup fee. But for any district that's really larger than 15 to 20 schools, we usually add on about two and a half hours of additional training included in that process. So you'd be getting about five hours of training um, included in the setup process. But you do also get um, ongoing training with your client success um, specialist. So if you guys, you know, say six months down the road, wanted to do another hour and a half training, that would be included in the um, kind of annual ongoing cost. 
Um, we do also offer on-site training options. That would be an additional fee, but any web-based training that basically is within that five-hour allotment is going to be included in the setup cost that we had uh, kind of bid in the RFP. Any other questions? And I can definitely kind of uh, cover any of these questions um, in a wrap-up email that I can send you guys. I don't think so at this right. point. Well, I think we're good then. So I am going to hand things over to Ivan and he's gonna go through um, kind of the functionality. <laughs> so I gotta be quick here. Uh, what is, can you just get to the demo? I think you can just minimize this area. Okay, perfect. So we'll be going through the back end or the admin side, how you guys can um, edit, create content. Uh, the CMS is created with ease of use in mind, so there's tons of features, but the way we uh, designed everything is basically simple. Uh, form based, you create, you know, you pick a feature that you want to update and you uh, fill out a form, the content appears on a specific area. The So, we'll be going through, you already saw some live sites. This is the demo site, so we'll be making some changes here. So, like I said, this is the platform is designed to have individual features that can be updated, and then each feature appears somewhere on the site, usually on the, on the um, home page. We have a lot of these uh, features popping up. So let's say we have this image in the background that um, can be part of the uh, shuffle that then you guys can update that. We can have a video up here or we can have a straight uh, photo shuffle like this one uh, that you guys can go in and somebody can start editing, adding photos to this. So we have the quick links, of course, for a quick navigation throughout the site, whatever you need to send your visitors. This is a um, what was this called? Spotlight. spotlight message. So this is the message that just remains here until you change it. Uh, this is the news, right? So each one of these, so we have the web links here, so you can add, edit links here. This is the calendar. So during the design process, your project manager will work with you to place certain uh, features on the site. You see that some of these uh, features can be displayed in different ways, so that's very nice the option to have um, kind of flexibility of presentation of these features, but the creation of the content is very consistent and allows a lot of ease of use. So a lot of the people, no matter uh, you know, technology, technology background, anybody can really come in here and edit. We'll go through some of these things, uh, like assigning access and things like this, but uh, let's just jump in and create some content here so you can see what this looks like. So I'm logging in as an admin here. Again, the back end is <clears throat> also designed to be uh, simple uh, and clean. We have a responsive back end as well, so somebody can jump in on their phone and maybe want to create a news post, they can do that, right? Uh, if I just come in here, uh, you can see these features, there's a lot of features organized in folders. So again, we're trying to keep this uh, well organized and easy to kind of navigate. So under plan, we have things like calendar, food menu, etc. We also have this drop down menu here that lists all these. So on the plan again, if I pop it up, it shows me the calendar. So if I'm on the calendar, I want to quickly go and create a news alert, I can jump from that page directly into news. Uh, so I'll start by creating a news post so we can see what that looks like. Then maybe uh, if there's any questions, we can definitely address that or we can just start going down the list. So on the announce, I'll go into news and alerts. And what I'm basically doing here is I want to uh, create a news post that will show up on my website. I already know through the product design where this is going to show up. This is going to show up on the news, uh, in the news section of the homepage, right? This is where this feature connects to the public site. This is my previously created news. Uh, we can go through all of, after I post the news, uh, I'll show you some things like uh, how you can actually uh, post uh, this news or share this news post in other uh, ways. But um, this is where you can come in, maybe disable, hide a previously created message, delete it, uh, things like this. So let's just create a brand new one right here. 
when you create a new expose, you see at the top first, you have to decide which area this is going to. So we have we give you the ability to have a limited number of uh, new sections. And also your schools can be connected to the district site. So, so from one place you can, from one post, you actually can hit all the or different schools. So as you can say, all my high schools, I want to post this message directly from the district site too. So there's some cross site uh, connections here. And then we just create a new uh, item, which was, uh, was it bus driver appreciation was coming up or something? And I just went to read that. Bus driver week, I just keep up that. That was from your guys' site, so I, I just try to pick one item. Uh, the show summary goes, uh, here, so the summary just appears, it's a little synopsis that appears on the front end, and then the main the main content is on the page that's automatically created related to that specific post, right? So we have the switch text format here. You can do hyperlinks and insert tables. You can do a lot of, uh, you have a lot of options here to customize the text, or you can choose directly from that link to open into a file. So we discussed a little bit about Google Drive integration. You have your um, Google Drive and other options here. So with Google Drive integrations, uh, with the Google Drive integration, you're able to pull files from Drive, or you can just directly drag and drop a file in here. So I wanted to add a picture. Here we go. That's some examples here. Oh, is that yeah. oh I missed it. Oh. <laughs> and then you, or you can have a link to a page, right? So we have three options, right? Content, link to a page, uh, or link to a file. So any of these news posts can actually be opened into a file. So let's say you say click here to fill out the release form. You can just link this directly to a file instead of opening it to a new page, or you can just directly send people to a website. Check out this new article about our football team. The link can go directly into a page. But usually you'll be creating a content news post, which is the headline summary, your message here. Then you can have a uh, Source independently, so if I want to add Google Images, for example, so it's either a source or just a link somewhere. And here I can attach my photo now for that um, news item. So you can have multiple photos here. You see two things you have featured and missing alt text. So the featured means that one image is going to be shown on the front end. So if I have a second image uploaded here, I can choose which one is the, the one that's going to appear on the home page. And then the outlet is missing a little relates to the ADA uh, requirement that we give you the option to select from the settings. So if you turn on the ADA requirement, this would mandate that all newly created uh, or uploaded uh, videos and photos would have the alt text added to this. So the alternative text requires a description of the image, so when the reader hits it, it describes exactly what the image consists of. So, uh, field, you can click here, and then I don't know what this is. So once you satisfy that, now this is going to allow me to post this news item, otherwise it won't. Uh, if you're curious, we can hit up the ADA um, here real quick. Uh, ADA, like I said, we have an option that you can turn on and uh, make requirements like this where images and videos have to have a um, file tags. We also have automatically created captions. So when you upload a video, we send the audio file to Google Speech, it gets converted into a caption and then comes right back. It usually takes about 20 minutes. So all the videos come up, come back with um, closed captioning, which also has the transcript built in. And then you can go and edit the captioning as well. And we can, uh, once we finish yeah, the we can, story, we can actually show you guys what that video would look like with the, the captions populated. Yes, okay, so we're pretty much done. So this is another um, element we wanted to highlight here is the ability to schedule a news post to appear later. So I can schedule this to you know come up next week. And when does it go down away from the site, right? So I can have an expiration date as well. So this is really it's one of the points here that we have where we can schedule content to appear and uh, go down. 
Uh, we also have for the messages, you can, you know, social media messages, uh, some sort of social media manager allows you to schedule a message to God, etc. So we have various options that allow you to do some work ahead of time, uh, knowing that it's going to go out at a specific uh, time you, that you selected. So that's, that's a little new story, right? We can just can post it. In. Yeah, so let's post this in. And then, like Ivan was saying, this is going to now take you to a screen that just gives you some additional options. Um, this kind of highlights some things like social media integration, um, the homepage pop-up alert. Right, so this is another one, another option. So the homepage pop-up alert allows you to, you know, make that message even more obvious on the site by having a big square show up when the visitor comes up to the site and then you can decide when this would go down. So let's say I want this message to stay up on my site for a couple of days. I can only have one message at a time, so I just want to replace that and overwrite that. And this is something a lot of our clients like to use this, like if they're having a weather delay or a big event or, you know, if the high school football team won the championship, whatever it is, kind of the first thing that you see as soon as you go to the site, so you can't really ignore it. So in addition to all of the other features, it's just a, a nice way to kind of get information out there in a very prevalent way. Right, so this would kind of nicely lead us into the social media manager. So social media manager, you can either post directly from this feature to, to social media, so you don't technically have to go to Facebook or Twitter if you don't want to. Or as you saw, once you post a news item that appears on your website, then you can pull that item into social media manager and have your image that you uh, created here or uploaded and the headline and summary. So as you can see, we have the character account. So one of this goes beyond the character limit for Twitter. This will truncate from the message and lead visitors back to your site, which is, uh, they won't miss anything going to allow them to consume that information. Facebook also doesn't have much of a limit. And again, you can post this later if you wanted to. And again, this is nice because it's showing, you know, just in a few moments how quick it really is to go in, update your news. You can push that news to all of the schools, just select schools. If you have kindergarten registration coming up and you want to push that to just the elementary school sites, and then you can also push that out to, to social media in just really a matter of minutes. Because, again, that's one of the big points of our system. We want to just make it as quick and easy um, to do things. And, you know, you guys all are busy. There's a lot of other things going on. So we want to make sure getting that content out to your site and kind of your other communication um, ways is, is as efficient as possible. I'm not sure how deep we want to get in this, but I just wanted to highlight the fact that you can also pull this news item into the email sender, which actually comes included with the CMS, right? So whereas text and voice are just add-ons and uh, we're not really going into that part of our services, email sender is actually built into the CMS and you guys as users at the school the district or even individuals like teachers can take advantage of this and send emails if they wanted to. So there's another option where you can pull this and directly communicate to specific groups, right? Whereas we have social media, website that goes out to uh, the community at large. You can have <clears throat> the option to send a um, message to a newsletter to specific groups. And here's my, you know, what my top paragraph would say. Here's what news items I want to bring. So you have the option to bring additional new news items if you want to, or just highlight. Uh, we have the preview course, and then who are you sending to? I don't know if I want to get. Yeah, and I think one example to go back to Shorewood School District, this is actually, if we refresh it, um, they have that subscribe to the Shorewood School Bulletin. So this is an example of one of our clients who's using our email sender module. I think they were previously using, I want to say MailChimp, um, and now they're using our module for this, which again is included in that pricing that we send over. And instead of, uh, you know, needing to think up with things, parents can actually come in and enter in, you know, their information and subscribe to the bulletin. So that's kind of, I guess, a real life use case 
of the email sender and how you can utilize our subscriber widgets um, to kind of connect to your different email lists, which is really nice. Yeah, so this thing can go out. Uh, just to highlight uh, what Adam was saying about the list. So you have, there's various ways of actually collecting information from the community. One was that widget that we talked about, but you can custom create, you can create some of these buttons. You can decide where they appear on the website. It's pretty nice. We also have the contact list area where you can create new custom groups of people. So, or you can depend on subscriptions. So we can go a little bit into subscriptions, which is going to kind of lead us pages, calendars, so let's just go into subscriptions a little bit. <clears throat> so if I go into, let's say, a random site here, so I'm people subscribe, right? If I go into my uh, stuff directory, we so that we're actually in those business. Hopefully. So here's a random individual, this is a teacher, that's a teacher page, right? Uh, I think one of the things we wanted to highlight here from the bullet points was um, the fact that uh, the, the design of these inside pages is very consistent. So when you see a teacher page, it would have the image, or the personal page would have the person's kind of ID badge that we have here, and then the main content in the middle. You have a couple of options to show you on the pages where you can <clears throat> either put this whole side bar on the left hand side or right hand side, but it's very kind of consistent to make sure that confusion with from visitors whether they're going to different sites uh, on of your district. So one of the options here is that as a parent, as a user, I can come here and subscribe to this teacher's actual home page. Put my um, you know information, email that would appear under those lists that I just showed you. And here we have the classes. So each teacher can have as many classes as they want. You can create a class this also allows you to do our Google Classroom integration. So when you post in Google, the things will show up here on the SEO site as well. So parents can know exactly what's going on. And parents can subscribe per class as well. So what happens is at the end of the day, on my subscription, if there's anything that happened, that any updates on the pages and site, I would get an email as a parent that combines all these updates and let me know what we going on today at the school. At the same time, I'm on the subscriber list, so when the teacher wants to send an email, they can do that. So this is all included in um, the CMS platform. Let's go into the calendar. Okay, do you want to jump into accessibility really quickly since we kind of started touching on that? So I know that that's um, <coughs> sure. the ADA compliance. And keep in mind with website accessibility as Ivan is kind of navigating into the setting within our system. During the process and during the project itself, our project managers as well as our tech support team and client success team is trained in accessibility, you know, that we have the different requirements there. So when we deliver a website to a client, we do deliver it with, um, you know, a minimal, a double A, WCAG, you know, 2.0 kind of score, I guess you could say. Um, but again, with accessibility, it's not always the issue of, you know, okay, I have a brand new site and I'm launching it and it's ADA friendly. Oftentimes the issue stems from, okay, after it launches, how do I make sure that my site stays accessible, especially because I have multiple users at multiple schools posting content. So that's where our ADA setting comes into play. And this is really going to be how, um, you know, ongoing you can make sure that your site, you know, is going to be ADA friendly from the get go. And keep in mind that we do code our sites to be ADA friendly, all the navigation, all the page structure is coded. So, you know, if I'm on a screen reader, I can navigate the site. We do also, we're beta testing kind of, I guess you could say, an Alexa-style voice activation tool so someone can actually talk to the website and navigate that way. You know, you can say, what's going on on February 14th? And it'll read off, you know, the calendar events of that day. So that's something to kind of even move beyond just standard accessibility. We want to get really creative. And it's been very successful for our districts that have been using that. Um, but those are kind of, you know, our, our ultimate goals and what we're moving towards. But with this ADA setting, like Ivan mentioned earlier, 
it's going to require users to have alt text um, anytime they update pictures. It's going to activate our closed captioning tools. So again, a, a bunch of great features on top of you know everything from the part. by the AI, sometimes they might be corrupted. The point is that the caption does not come back and the video appears without captioning. It's not going to show up on site if the setting is turned on. And like Andy was saying, at launch, we're as close to doubling uh, requirements or uh, standards as possible. And then after that, it's up to the user. We have some built-in restrictions that prevent you guys from making some mistakes, for example, uh, header one is reserved for pages. Header one is reserved only for the title of the page. You cannot, a user cannot use header one within the page, right? So it starts with header two as an option. Things like this. After that, you can use whatever site scanner of your choice might be. Um, we, you know, have not partnered or worked with any site scanners for various reasons. <clears throat> one of which is a lot of these uh, contracts require it's almost uh, makes it a requirement that it's exclusive to contract, which we don't find you know very fair for our customers. We want you guys to use whatever system uh, you're comfortable with to scan through the site. And then we have you know guides on best practices how to avoid some of these uh, issues in the future or to prevent these OCR letters were uh, going out. Um, is there any questions on the ADA piece? We can maybe quickly just go into videos and. I think just showing them what the captions look yeah. like on the front end would be nice. And to kind of piggyback off of what Ivan was saying, you know, ultimately with like website scanners, whether it be, um, you know, Site Improve, Audio Eye, I don't know if you guys are looking at any of these as options, but we have clients that work with a, a plethora of different scanning options, and we just want to make sure that there's no conflict of interest there. So that way, you know, it's not something that, you know, your website provider is telling you that your site is ADA secure. Um, again, we want to make sure that the third party system stays without any sort of conflict of interest um, while, you know, being very seamless. So if that is something that you guys are thinking about doing, keep in mind you can use whatever site scanner that you need. Um, like Ivan said, you don't have to be restricted to just one um, that we partner with. Um, but again, at the end of the day, we want to make sure that the accessibility, that your site is accessible, you know, from the get-go um, without having to rely too heavily on constantly checking it with the site scanner. So here's an example of a video that's been uploaded. So you can check what it looks like on the homepage. Is that going to be too loud? Um, I think if you just play it and then turn the volume down. Oh. Yeah. There we go. So this is the video. Here's the running. So this is a video as it appears on the public site, right? And then if I come back here on the admin site, I can see the captioning has been uploaded, my transcript is ready. If I want to edit captions, I can come back in and we break the video into 2.5 second sections and then you can come in here and make sure it's Right, so we can live editing that once I save it, it's going to here on the site. So obviously sometimes, again, with the AI converting this to speech, uh, text to speech, sometimes errors happen. So it's good for everybody to kind of come in here and check or upload a video. Um, but um, you do have the option to edit these videos yourselves. So what is... So I think from here, do you want to hop into creating a page from scratch? Sure. So as we said, we have, we've kind of looked at the teacher page. I can just actually create a, a, a brand new page. Okay. We can go over some of these other details before it. The page editor, again, extremely simple. Pages are organized in a few containers. So we have all the pages collected in up to six what we call categories. So this houses every single section. And then each section has its own uh, unlimited number of pages you can create, right? So this is my one of my miscellaneous whatever section uh, category, and then under about I have all these twenty pages, right? So if I go into what do these pages look like? If I go into my a public site to preview what these look like, so this is 
kind of the history or uh, information about the school. So here you can upload or create content text, videos, whatever you want to upload in here. Uh, so I'm going to go back and create a brand new page, right? So all these pages are listed here under the side menu, and I can continue to add if I wanted to, or I can create a brand new section, create pages within it, whatever your option is, right? And once you have all these pages here, I can drag and drop, change the order in the menu if I wanted to. I can also hide and unpublish pages. I can move on the previously created page, and then I can preview the history. So we can go into that in a second. But first, let's just make a page and see what that looks like. So when you, when you make a brand new page, you have the option to create that page and start adding content, or you can literally just have a link that goes somewhere else, whether on another site, <coughs> or something within your own website. So if I go into a back slide page, I just have the option of adding some containers so it's very easily broken down. So there's no confusion, right? So I have three options. Content or content, which is the text, gallery, which is the one with that photo, and files, right? So I can have my uh, text box here. Right? We have the rich text editor. Again, I can upload and consider embed videos in here. I can have my um, inline images, tables. So you have a lot of options here. As well, if I go into the gallery, I can start pulling up some images here. So this allows me to have something like a Photoshop or a photo gallery within my page. Let me add another one so you guys can see that. You can either have this as a shuffle or you can have it stack, right? So if I want to rotate it, it's going to be a shuffle, so I'll use that. I guess it'll be like it's you know, calm and possible. I want our demo site to get hit with <laughs> issues. And then finally, the file. So when you upload files in here, you can stack as many files as you want. Files are saved within the page. You can change the uh, edit the name of the file right here on the page if you wanted to. And you can also have the option to display the file on the page itself. So instead of having just file name, I can actually expose the entire PDF so people can uh, consume that information right there. And that file rename function is actually a really big, it seems like it's a very minimal feature, but it's actually a really big deal with website accessibility because, again, you're having a detailed kind of proper description for your PDF. It's very, very important to make sure that people have, you know, an idea of what the content in the PDF is before they actually upload it. So if hosting is a little bit of a minimal description, we could actually go in and edit that description and um, make it a little bit longer, more descriptive. Um, and then with that, it's just going to make it much, much, much more ADA friendly. PDFs are always a little bit of a sticky subject, which is also one of the reasons why, um, you know, a lot of people like to embed PDFs, but that is kind of a big no-no. However, the way that we've structured this is you can have a visible displayable PDF, but you also still have the visible displayable file name. Um, and you can also, um, with some programs, you can actually put alt text on the PDF, which is another great option. So again, we want to cover all of the PDF functionality as early as possible. Yeah, this is actually a widget. Once we display this, you see, but if this is multiple pages, it is, it's actually the Adobe widget for that allows us to display the file, right? Let's just look at the image that of, of this. That's just um, embedded into the in the form or in the page. So I've done a couple of things here, right? So text, images on the sidebar, we can have this. I alluded a little bit of the options that we have for templates, so whether you want to have everything on the left-hand side or not, or maybe not even any, have any columns, it's just like maybe if you want to create a single landing page that doesn't have sub-pages within it. So on the right-hand side, I'll keep my, you know, I'll keep everything consistent, I'll keep the format with the, oh, my page. So I have the option as well to save this and work on this as a draft, and it's not going to be displayed, right? So if I save this, go back into my public site wherever I was showing this, it's not going to show up on the menu. Yes. And if I want to now display that page, I'm done, everything's looking good. 
I really think. So let's see what we've been working on here. So in 10 seconds, we created some content new. And it's easy to do that. Anything else? Let's go maybe into uh, the page history. I think this is something that. Yeah, we use so the action section is where you're going to see things like the page option. Um, we do integrate with Google Analytics. So this is also where you can go in and put in things like your SEO, keywords, meta descriptions. You can do that both at the site level, but also at every individual page level. And then if we go back to um, that page, it's also under actions. This is where you're going to see page history. So as you're making, um, do you wanna, yeah. So as you're making changes, you can see all of the different page history here. So again, if you have different users updating uh, content pages, it's always going to show you, you know, which uh, username saved the page the date and time stamp, and then that little eye icon there is going to show you any previous versions of the page. Um, so if for whatever reason, somebody goes in and accidentally deletes something off of a page that they weren't supposed to, um, you can always go back and retrieve that content by reverting it to a previous version of the page. So very, very easy um, to do that. Okay. Should we jump uh, into maybe navigation to show how all these features, yeah. you know, not everything can appear on the home page, so we have to go through maybe sharing your information here, your pages and your uh, features on the drop down menu here. So navigation is separated from pages, which nicely allows you to put whatever pages you want. So you saw how pages are organized in these sections with their own section menu. So you can take a specific page in a section, link it to a drop down and have the rest of that section be accessible from that side menu, right? So if I go into the site navigation, we'll see how that's organized. This is independent. And from here again, you have several options. I'll just show you a quick example of how you can add. So here's my main dropdown about us. It's how it's all these, academics, whatever. So you can see all these things that you here for us, all these numerous pages and options under about us. So if I want to add a new one, now I can pull a, either a page. So let's say I want to pull my new newly created page. So I'll give me a pop-up here with all the pages that I have added. I'm adding my either new page, done, boom, that's it. So if I go here into my let's see how quickly this comes up. Refresh. Well, it's doing Oh my god, are we having like seven demos in the same morning. So here's the link to the page, right? So this goes right into a page in my own site, right? Whereas if I go in here and say, well, I want this to be a URL that goes somewhere else, so this can be again either like let's say go back to the district from the school district uh, link. You can have your file, so it can be the form that needs to be filled out. So this can open directly into a file. And then finally, the features that we talked about. So all these features that Ed Leo carries and provides for you guys, calendar, food menu, forms, everything, you can actually pull a specific individual feature into the site uh, or the navigation as well. So with that makes it very, very simple and quick to add the items and organize them however you want, and then for parents to get the information that they need. Uh, as far as password protection, we can password protect any of these pages and features that we're showing you because, again, they're separated. So we can organize different groups that allow to touch specific things on the main site. Right. So if I go into staff directory or if I go into uh, staff only, there's a password protected area. And let's see if I choose to choose to because this is one of my users that I usually use it's, it's recommended here. So now it unlocked the specific section or area of the site. Okay. You want to show the capture thing from here too? Yeah, so on the contact, let's see if I can think. 
Okay, so this is, I don't think it turned on for this site. Oh, so the capture thing is at the bottom, right? So let's say we have our um, contact page. We have our, you know, map and what's your username or name and email, what's your message. But we do have capture built in. We actually also have for some of the sites um, by default, when you actually start start typing in here, because I already kind of authenticated I'm a user on the site by logging into access to that page. But if you're a random person visiting the site and you click into any of these, submit a you know message to the school or district, it pulls a requirement that you authenticate yourself with Google or uh, Facebook. So we can turn that on or off if you want. Uh, so there's an extra level of security because sometimes people just don't want to receive, you know, anonymous messages from random people. They want to make sure there's a trail for security reasons. Uh, speaking of security. So should we talk about... Um, oh, maybe a little bit of search. I mean, search is right yeah, there. Search, search, search and translation, right? So this is kind of basic thing that we offer. Uh, we're kind of excited to move away from that general Google search. and We have more of a customized internal search now. So I think... If I go, let's say, Eve, I think is our <laughs> Steve Johnson's page, administration superintendent, right? So I just found Eve Doyle, the, but whatever this is. I just went through some of these sites. This is our superintendent supposedly for, for this site. So the point is, it's internal custom search. Uh, you can also search, uh, you know, your file, uh, the different pages, whatever's on the site, instead of it going out, no ad, none of this uh, Google business. Google kind of scared us, they were pulling away off the search because that would be the enough for us. And we actually started working on this in anticipation that the search was going away. Then they didn't really do it, but we said, you know what, this is even better because we already built it, so let's just start rolling it off the site. It's just a better version of search. Mm -hmm. uh, the translation is. I got a quick question on the, on the search. Um, does it search just title titles of files, or does it search within the file when you do a search? I don't think it searches within the file. It does, it does already. Yeah. Okay. I think it already does um, right. any of the content inside the file because that was one of the features that we had when we were using the Google search functionality. It would also we had it set up so it would also search within the content of the file. So, you know, building our own search module, we obviously needed to also replicate the functionality that our clients had, you know, with the Google search model. So it would also search within the, the file content itself. Translation is Google Translate. I'm Bulgarian, let's have a laugh. <laughs> Take my word as this is correct. <laughs> So this is, uh, you know, translate the whole site into the selected whatever um, Google translation provides. Content. Yeah, and we've had some clients want, like, custom translation buttons on their site. Like, some of our clients that have, oh, yeah. you know, high Spanish-speaking populations, and if you wanted to have a button that actually said, you know, kind of Espanol or whatever you wanted to say, those, those are all some functionalities that we can build into the design. So shall we chat a little bit about um, what the, the, we haven't touched access? on the uh, login, so LDAP, Google, I guess we talked about that a little okay, bit. Okay, so, so we do support if you guys are using, I'm assuming you're using Google single sign-on, uh, it's a Google school, but we do support LDAP, Active Directory, and Google single sign-on. Um, we have the help center. Yeah, we have, let me see if I can answer. Okay. Toggle that down. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go to the help center. Uh, so the help center has a guide uh, helping you uh, set that up or what you need to do, but it's basically accessing the uh, API API dash and adding us there. And then the nice thing about that is our help center is also built on MDO, so search works just as well. So sign in with Google uh, single sign up. So once you set this up. Your users can just come in, authenticate, and then if they are already existing into that new CMS, they'll just log in. Uh, but the nice thing is they can actually create brand new accounts for them if needed, right? So you can come in, set up, be authenticated through Google, not have an account in the CMS, but actually we automatically create an account for you. And you can even 
request some access if maybe you need more access on the website. So we'll talk about access maybe after, right after this because that makes sense. Who has what access? You have different access levels. If you're a teacher, maybe you're just uh, in charge of your own uh, pages and classes, or you're given access to the whole department versus an admin that, or a person that maybe should have access to general features like news and calendar, but not the whole site. And then you have admins like you guys where you have you're designated as a website admin, you have access to absolutely everything, create account and have the control over absolutely everything. So the point is, you don't have to even import any users into the into NDO initially if you're working with Google and the sign up. Your users want the, the two platforms are connected. Their users can come directly into the site and you know, have these sites uh, have these accounts created for them in the CMS there. And of course, everybody knows the benefits of single sign on security and you know, no need to use passwords and things like that. So I'm not going to detail. Any questions on this one? There is, there's just, as I said, there's a guide that helps you kind of go into. I know there's a change coming in March, but our dev team is already you know, taking care of that. So no matter what's going on with uh, Google Single Sign On, we are ready to take that on. And if you want to also, are you guys, um, do you want to switch all of that? Um, are you guys more leaning towards Google Single Sign-On or LDAP, or have you kind of made that decision yet? It would be Google. It would be Google. Yeah, right. Google would be preferred, yeah. Yeah. So, and keep in mind that kind of going back to the, the project aspect, that is something that doesn't need to be decided in, you know, right up front. So that's something that we can definitely discuss and go over. But if you guys are leaning towards Google, that's something um, that we're supporting. Uh, user management, just access, the so finding access and all that. I just wanted to kind of maybe go through that real quick so you guys can see as an admin what you can do with these um, account types. So when you create a brand new account, you can designate something to the website administrator that full right access to the whole site. Uh, or they can be a specific type of user, so they can be a, a site manager or a teacher or other, right? And then once you have a user that she's going to, we have to disable the account sometimes too, but let's say a general user, users. Okay, so who's this? So if I go into Mike's account, general information who this person is, what type of a um, Account type, this is the teacher. So if I go into edit profile, I can edit their general information here, change the, their um, staff, what type of staff member this is, and then start assigning. If I want to make this a website administrator, I can give them full rights access to the site, or I can start assigning um, access to different areas of the site. So this is pages. So on the pages, I can assign different section access. So there's all the different categories with all the sections within it. So I can keep assigning different or all for different section access to people. So it's very granular. And then we have the features, right? So we have news. I can assign specific news category access or give them access to the whole thing. Same thing for calendars and all the other features that we kind of mentioned, right? So we went into video. We can give access to somebody to upload videos, Photoshop, um, many, etc. Does that make sense? Yep. Good enough? I think that's good. And then um, I think lastly, we just want to touch briefly on the um, disaster recovery information. If you want to talk about that, right? Great. So we are, uh, you know, pretty advanced on the hosting uh, storage. We are using AWS, so it's everything in the cloud. They have, you know. Uh, dozen servers uh, throughout the country. We also have a CDN at the same time. So we use Fastly. So the point is your data comes as quickly as possible. It's uh, server side. Uh, sites load very quickly because the information comes from the closest um, possible uh, server. But everything is on a constant, or a constantly being uh, backed up as well. And since we use uh, Amazon Web Services, obviously, everything is extremely secure and stable, but we also do have, uh, through their service as well, have the additional backing up and caching on this information. So, um, 
does that kind of help answer? Is there anything else that we can kind of go through? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then with that in mind also. Oh, there's one last thing. One last thing. I'm sorry. For this continuous release, so this has come up with some of these competitors. So I don't even know this is happening still, but I just wanted to reiterate so you guys are comfortable. When we, we're very agile, so we continue to upgrade existing features, uh, launch new features. So this is on a regular basis, on a daily basis, we're tinkering specific things or we're launching something that might be a little bit bigger, like a whole feature. Uh, either provided, you know, they're launched to the entire platform, so every all the users have access to it, uh, versus, you know, having uh, more versions like 3.0 and then we have to upgrade client for client on a client to client basis. A lot of these, sometimes what I've heard is better is that they're actually charging because of such a big uh, change. There's that still, you know, um, transfer content over or whatever it might be. But some people ha are being forced into upgrading into different versions. Uh, the only thing that Edlio might do is create a brand new feature that is, you know, so advanced that maybe not everybody would. Uh, necessarily need, but we just have add-ons, right? So we can create a feature that says, okay, we're doing a brand new thing, but let's say text and voice. When text and voice launched, we said, okay, we're paying for these services because we pay per message. We'll, allow, we'll offer this as an option for clients. But when we, let's say, upgraded completely the Photoshop or the, you know, launched the closed captioning feature, that, that's not, um, you know, an add-on, that's just launched to every single user. And the point is everybody has access to these features right away uh, instead of waiting for the kind of version to launch in two years or something. So I just want to reiterate that because I keep hearing this and that's a uh, Yes, huge. And one thing. of the reasons we can do that is our platform's actually built on microservices. So again, they're kind of individually built in a cohesive platform. So if we need to upgrade one feature, we don't have to like completely go back to the drawing board of the platform. We can launch very um, continuously. And like Ivan was saying, most of those features are going to be upgraded features that all of our clients get. We try to keep a, a minimal amount of add-ons um, so that way it's not just feeling like constantly getting nickels and dimes for, for different add-ons and different services, which is also why we keep tax support and other options um, much more robust and unlimited. So sure. I think one thing I, I realized we forgot we showed didn't show is just briefly showing them the Google Calendar integration. Do you want to just okay, jump so into settings? Sure. So real quick, where you see the calendar? If I go into the calendar, so this is the Edio calendar view. These are the different calendar uh, sections that we've created. Right. So I can, as a parent, maybe I care about these three calendars here. I can, view, I can view the events related to these three calendars. I can also subscribe to these calendars. And as a user, I can pull these into my own you know, parent Google Calendar, right? The way our uh, Google Calendar integration works for you guys is that in the schools, any one of these here can be a Google Calendar or all of them can be a Google Calendar. The integration displays the event uh, seamlessly as part of the design of uh, Edlio. But you have the one-to-one -one calendar integration possible. So if I go into the admin side here in the settings, remember I can have 15, let's say, for example, 15 categories of calendars, and any one or all of them can be synced with Google. Right? So if I go in here, let's say I have athletic. If I go into connect to Google, Any one of these can now be uh, connected to that one calendar. So it's a, again, two way calendar, it goes both ways. I'm not going to do that to the <laughs> but, uh, but, but I think they get the, the idea. So again, yeah, so conferences, this is just everybody has access to each other. This is my calendar, whatever. Some of these things are weird, but this is all the Google calendars that we have under this account that's visible. We, Sales conferences, et cetera, et cetera. This is just actual uh, the users that we are. Um, but the point is, again, each school can have uh, as many calendars as they want connected with Google. It's a one to one. They can display, they can have 
somebody who might want to choose to use that Leo calendar, they can do to do that. Parents can go and subscribe either to your own Google calendars or subscribe to the uh, website, the subscription option, whatever they need. What else? I think. Oh, wait, questions, questions. Yeah, question. Um, <laughs> Should I make a calendar? I mean, I don't need to. Good. I, yeah. I think I know our hard stop is 9.30 Pacific, 11.30 Central. So um, I think at this point, um, we've gotten through our agenda items. Were there any? No, I don't think so. Okay. Um, no, I think we're, I think, uh, does anybody have any questions specifically? No, not really. Nope. Okay. So, so, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Let's for look at the uh, staff director because I'm seeing this. Now I'm getting obsessed with talking about every single one of these nights. Uh, I'm born on the 19th. I have a birthday next week. This is 19th month. I want to do it. Let's just go get a coffee. All right. But, um, but anyway, you have the settings options where you can have the Play how your, or sorry, the staff direction, uh, staff directory option, uh, how your images display, what information is visible here. So, yeah, we have different layouts that you can choose from in the staff directory. Um, and one thing that we did, I know it's not on the agenda, but I did see in the RFP pricing, we actually included our form module. Um, was that something that you guys, you know, kind of an online web form tool with like payment functionality? Is that something that you guys would like to, to kind of take a quick look at? No, I, I think we're good. I mean, I, I know you have it, so it's... Yeah, it's something that we need to, but I think we're, we're already right that. Nothing, everyone's just dying for, I guess for you guys, it's almost lunchtime, so we won't torture you anymore. But we really appreciate the time um, to present to everyone today and just show off our platform. If there are any additional questions, again, I'll send over just a, a real quick wrap-up email. Um, all the pricing and everything was in that RFP, so I'm not sure if you want us to kind of quickly go over pricing. I'm happy to, um, but if there were any additional questions, feel free to, to reach out to, to us. Um, and as far as a kind of decision process, is there a specific time of when you're going to kind of choose a, a final vendor for the process? Uh, what we hope to do today is finish most of the demos today and then uh, uh, spend some time going through the results of our internal uh, uh, sort of analysis. And I would say probably within the next couple of weeks. Okay, wonderful. Well, again, let us know if you need anything else in the meantime. We, we really appreciate your time and hope you all have a, a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you much. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. So, talk about spawning a demo. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not rating this one because I would have to watch it.